Oh, now I'm going to start talking all of a sudden, so I suppose I should start speaking softly. So this is from my first batch of rice glue. It's been in the refrigerator. You don't have to refrigerate it, but you might as well. Um, so you can see this blends on quite well. Oh, what I wanted, to, the reason I started talking <clears throat> was this is some of those alcohol-based sprays I've made, and I use uh, even the water-based ones, though. If you use a good tube watercolor uh, that's color fast, then you can mix that because a uh, tube watercolor is pure pigment, pretty much pure pigment. Uh, and then you can mix that with water in a little, uh, or alcohol in a little spray bottle. Now, rubbing alcohol didn't work, but vodka did. So um, that's on the alcohol sprays, but I don't know if that really matters because these watercolor pigments that I use are, are color fast. So when you lay a watercolor wash down and you let it dry, you can lay another one on top of it and the two won't mix together. So this is basically, it's just sprayed on, it's watercolor <laughs> or vodka color. <laughs> Okay, whoops. And another advantage of this too is that you can um, you have a little more drying time to reposition things. So I think I've demonstrated pretty much what I wanted to demonstrate here. I want to demonstrate too that this is gentler than Mod Podge even. You can just spread it all on and Stick these napkins on and how you keep some in your brush so your brush glides smoothly and you brush toward the outside and you make a real nice bond of the uh, two papers here. Um, whoops. I'm going to let these dry because they take, they do take longer to dry also. Um, but I don't mind. I've worked in oil paint and I've worked in watercolor and both of those are things where you just work for a while and it's, well, it's time for it to dry. Go find something else to do. Ah. Oh, I have one more thing to show you, which is uh, some of the glue paste from the bottom of the pan. Oh, and some that was up on the wall. So let me go get it and show you. It's, it's quite hard and transparent and really interesting. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so after um, cooking, I cooked up uh, these two jars that I have here. I used two cups of uncooked uh, rice to make, and I ate some, and I have some left over. I wound up with too much. And then after boiling and boiling the rice with water to make sure that you're getting, the, I guess, the gluten, which is what makes it sticky, out, um, what I wound up with um, is this stuck on the bottom. I don't know how you can best see the transparency of it. Oh, dear. Um, this is very, very smooth and shiny. That's the side that was on the, the pan. Okay, so this is rougher. So it's a little bit um, yellowish. So that's the part of the rice that I'm not going to be using. But you see how hard this is? It's like a little piece of plastic. Listen. Okay. And then the prettiest piece... You know, when you boil rice or potatoes or starchy things in a stainless steel pan up on the edges, it'll um, make a thin 
film. Okay, this is that thin film from the rice. See how transparent it is? But also um, durable. I mean, it'll break when I bend it, but it's... And, of course, this is much thicker than what we have on our paper here. But, yeah, this is basically rice, rice paper. Uh, I mean, not rice paper, but rice paste. Not glue, this is paste. Oh, I have one more thing to show you. Just the fun stuff. Um, recycling tea bags. These don't go in the tra in the green bin but actually the tea does. I've been emptying the, the uh, tea from inside of these, the used tea, uh, into mulch and planters and things like that. Um, and keeping uh, the tea bags, because they're fun for collaging. Um, or decoupaging, they're, they're sturdy and they're transparent and they um, make things antique, kind of. So I'm just going to do the old slop it on here, get this good and wet and smooth, not lumpy. This is a little lumpy because it's the very bottom of the jar of the first batch. And then just like you do with the tissue paper, and Put enough glue on your brush to be able to smooth out what you're attaching. And then as you do apply pressure, okay? And these are cotton fiber, wood fiber, papers. None of them are a slick paper. So that when I put them with the water and the glue and what they are made of, they actually bond on a fibrous layer. Uh, let's see. Mm. What else do I want to put down? Oh, maybe that's all. Oh, let me put one on here and see if that covers it up. And this is not terribly sticky. You see, I'm picking this up and moving it around. And they're not sticking to each other. I mean, they will if they're super wet and you've exactly just done it. But okay, there's that. So we'll cover this. You'll probably still be able to see through it, but it's okay. So all of these papers here, when I make my tea, I have a little stack of papers and I just drop a drop the tea bag on it when I take it out of the cup or the pot and let it soak into um, various junk mail or mail pages until they dry and then they leave some nice sometimes they leave nice circular marks on the paper I guess I don't have any of those right now well there's one right there from a tea bag it's a good splash, too. It must have dropped that one and left it where it fell. But anyway, these kind of match. And you're just decorating background papers here. Oh, let's see. Where are those little tea bags I put together? Here they are. And see how nicely they're put together already? Now they're wet, so I'm not going to pull on them. But how nice. And that is a very beautiful little piece of Franken paper. Mm. I'll add one, one more. And again, you can slop this around um, 
Now, I wouldn't slop it on your furniture, but it... It's a real easy cleanup. And you notice I'm sticking my brush into the glue, the small glue here, frequently. And when this is empty, and that's the nice thing about this glue, is you can make sure that your container is super empty. You can just keep going in and picking up glue until it's all clean. I will then wash this, and then with a nice spoon, hmm. I had one here earlier. Here it is. With a nice spoon, I'll go into my my master jar and fill this because these do pick up germs from your hands. Uh, this is recycled stuff, you know, so you're getting some contaminants back in here, and that's what will mold. But you keep these clean, put in a clean spoon, and they're not going to mold. I don't know what I did with the top to this. Um, let's do one more just for fun while these are wet. Um, which one's wettest? This one? And then this, just like we do with the Mod Podge or the plastic glues, polymer glues, and etc. Um, we can get this all attached where we want it to the underneath paper, in this case, the tea bags. Oh, see, I'm getting all that glue out of there. And I'm going to wash my brush. Whoops. Well, I got a little bit carried away there. Now, you see here, this is pulling away because it's wet. So you can do that, or you can wait for it to dry and come in and... and uh, I made a hole there. Got too carried away. Oh, one last thing. I showed you this at the beginning. You see these around people, and I use them too. People will use them to just get a bunch of water onto a watercolor paper uh, for a, a wash. But what it actually is, is this is for scroll mounting. And this is what you smooth the glue and the, the paper down with. A big one. But it's soft, but it's got a spring, okay, just like this stuff here. So you can put a bit of pressure on your paper to get it to not just adhere, but actually a bond on a, on a fibrous level, the fibers of the uh, wood and cotton and cellulose and what all else is in. The paper that you're using. Okay. Now you see how this looks. It looks like it's painted on there. It's wet still. And it will when it's dry. Makes a really nice transparency. And a very, very nice bond. Oh, 
Let's see. There's this one. It's getting nice and crinkly. Everything's glued on. Looks like this string might need another layer. And let's see. I glued on some dyed or painted uh, junk paper on top as well as the transparency. So I'll let all these dry. And I will guess I'll put this on pause and maybe come back in the evening, turn on the light on the camera, and share. So, um, this, oh yeah, this is handmade glue. Um, I boiled it and boiled it and boiled it and kept watching it. I made it before when I was in Taiwan, so I kind of knew what to look for, I remember, and get the, also get the right consistency um, to it and then after it gets to that then I hand press it through a sieve I put it on the sieve and let it drip a little bit but it's fairly thick and then I hand press it through and then like I say at the bottom of the pan I do wind up with some more uh, Here, yeah, you can see the different, like, air holes and stuff in it. This is the rough side of some of the globs of more solid starch, starchy parts of the glue. I don't know. I think the cat ate some of what, what was in there. And this one is sort of a mix. You can see it's very transparent, but it's also got some of those thicker elements. So what I'm doing is in hand, hand pushing it through a, a sieve, a regular uh, kitchen sieve. Um, another thing I could do is put it into a big cheesecloth and squeeze it. You know, that's, a, <laughs> maybe I'll do that next time. <laughs> I make yogurt, yes, sour, uh, uh, cream cheese out of yogurt when I lived in Taiwan as well. So some experience with cheesecloth there uh, but right now I'm just using my my regular um, strainer and pushing it through that so it's it's very 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 handmade but this one looks like it's maybe a little clumpy oh this one I burned I burned it but I saved it just in time Oh, it's, like I say, it's labor-intensive. You really have to pay attention. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so this is good. Let me just put it on pause so that it'll pick right up, and hopefully everything's the right direction and all. And um, if you have any questions, please ask. I'm getting better about checking for comments. Um and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And click on the little bell for notifications. You'll get one of those little notifications that comes into your phone when I upload something, which is not a bad idea for my stuff because I uh, tend to upload things sporadically. Uh, and if you subscribe, then you just have a, a general feed that you go to and you can look in it and the people you subscribe to will show up. And both of those help me, help me get these noticed. So I'm really concerned about having so much acrylic. I've been doing all of this mixed media and, and just loving this Mod Podge and yet, yet all this kind of stuff. It's great, it's convenient. But every time you rinse out those brushes or wash your hands, you're throwing microplastics down uh, the drain. Now, there is somebody here on YouTube who has made a video about what to do with your brush rinse water when you're using acrylics and what chemicals to put in it to neutralize it so that you can then take it and bury it. So, um, yeah.
you can do that. Or you could try to use this. And I did mention on another video, I learned to do this in a scroll mounting class. I mounted scrolls in 1982, three, four, somewhere around there. They're fine. But beyond that, there are scrolls in the National Palace Museum that are hundreds of years old, and they're fine, too. And they use rice glue. They are kept nice and flat um, in, a, in a way similar to what we do with watercolor paper with stretching. When you're mounting a scroll, you, mount, you put the whole thing on a giant board, like a door or something, to keep it uh, flat. And then scrolls, of course, are rolled up, so they're always kept flat. So um, this kind of wrinkling is not bad. It's not, not unusual. Uh, and with more layers, I think it'll flatten out as well. All right, I think that's all I have to say. And, uh, oh, this is in two pieces already. Okay, put this on pause. Okay, it's been, I don't know, maybe, um, no, I cut up a tomato and had some cottage cheese and basil and black lava salt on it and ate that. So that may be about 20 minutes. This is still very wet here. And you can see it's wet. But we glued these earlier on this tape. And they're good. See? They're dry. I'm not going to pull this one. That'll come apart for sure. But yeah, Nice. Um... And, you know, they've got these little little teeth, too, so that helps them stick together. And again, this is Franken paper. It's a basic layer. I think I'll probably add it to this larger sheet that I have here. Got this big, very big sheet out on the patio, and I'm out of plastic glue. <laughs> I have some Mod Podge, but I think I'm going to do a little bit on the big one out there with some of the preliminary sheets putting together if they're, you know, this kind of stuff to put on to that and do as much of that as I can with the rice glue. I cannot use this rice glue over the acrylic, though. In some places I can, because the acrylic is only on the back of some things, and so the, uh, yeah, the back that, that has been glued, and so the front of it is where I would be putting my rice glue to glue another piece, and that's okay. This is a combination page. isn't designed, only the foundation is here. Anyway, that's good. Um, this is still quite wet, but you can see the nice bond it has. It just really becomes one with the, with the paper, and again, the least expensive papers work the best. Because they're pulpy. And you can wear cotton fiber too. And that's museum quality. Right. Oh, yeah, here's another one. So I that's a pretty good little demonstration of how the glues work. And again. Give me a like, otherwise called a thumbs up. Uh, make a comment and subscribe. I really would like to get more people enthusiastic about using rice glue for gluing paper when possible. It's so easy to clean up too. I already washed my brush just when I 
made my lunch or dinner. All right. Thank you for watching. You know, I hope my voice wasn't too much of a shock coming in. I'm going to have to note where that is because it started out so nice and quiet. It took me days to get around to making the video because I didn't feel like talking. <laughs> Once I got started, as usual, you couldn't turn me off. All right.